Love him or hate him, Deion Sanders is currently at the center of the college football universe. Just like in his playing days, Deion's bravado has captured the attention of sports fans everywhere, and his success continues to back up his talk. How has he gotten here, and what is the driving force behind his success? Let's find out. Deion Sanders was one of the most recognizable American sporting figures of the 20th century. Prime Time had a Hall of Fame football career and also dabbled in Major League Baseball as well. About a decade after his playing career ended, Prime started coaching because he says he felt God had called him to that purpose. He started at his controversial prep school, Prime Prep. After a few more stops, he made national news in 2020 by accepting the head coaching job at Jackson State, an HBCU team that had fallen on tough times. Jackson State hadn't had a winning season since 2013 and hadn't won their conference title since 2007. For a school with a rich history that includes pro football Hall of Famers Walter Payton and Jackie Slater, the school was looking for a boost, and they got it by taking a massive risk on Coach Prime. After a difficult first year where the team played its season in the spring because of the pandemic, Dion, with the help of his sons Shadur and Shiloh, who transferred into Jackson State, won back-to-back -back conference titles with 11-2 and 12-1 and records. And it wasn't just the results on the field that mattered. Dion raised the profile of Jackson State and HBCUs in general, thrusting them into the national spotlight. He spoke a lot during these years about how he was called to uplift HBCUs and show they could compete with Power 5 conference teams. And he proved it was possible when he got the number one recruit in the nation, Travis Hunter, to choose Jackson State over Florida State, Dion's alma mater. But all the while, Coach Prime still kept the door open for a jump to another school, should a good opportunity arise. That opportunity arose on December 3rd, 2022, when Deion Sanders accepted the head coaching job at the University of Colorado. From the outside looking in, it didn't make sense how it happened. Deion had made a lot of noise about trying to uplift HBCUs and making that his calling, but there was an undercurrent of frustration with the Jackson State administration for lack of support. But even so, Colorado seemed like a strange fit. Deion's from Florida, went to Florida State, starred in the NFL and MLB in cities nowhere close to Colorado, and lived in Texas after retirement. Plus, Colorado has been one of the worst programs in the Power Five for the past 20 years, went 1-11 in 2022, and was standing on shaky ground in the crumbling Pac-12. But clearly Coach Prime loves a challenge, and immediately he started making a splash at Colorado. It seemed like right after he was hired, for a few weeks, every time he talked to the team, a viral video was created, including this one where he encouraged the current Colorado players to enter the transfer portal if they didn't want to be challenged. To go ahead and jump in the portal, and do whatever you're gonna get. Because the more you jump in, the more room you make. And those players largely took his advice. More than 50 players transferred out of Colorado, and in the end, only 10 scholarship players returned for the 2023 season. Coach Prime filled the empty slots with a good class of recruits and transfers. He brought in the 29th ranked recruiting class, including a five-star corner, but the best talent came through the number one ranked transfer class. Obviously, he brought his two sons with him again, but he also brought with him Travis Hunter, the former number one overall recruit that plays both wide receiver and cornerback. Hey, someone else did that, didn't they? And Colorado had a pretty special run to start the season. As 21-point underdogs on the road against TCU, who was in the national championship game last year, Colorado won outright 45-42 behind incredible performances from Travis Hunter and Shadur Sanders. The next week, they handled the Nebraska Cornhuskers easily 36-14, which still enticed a field rush from the excited fan base which was probably still buzzing about the week before. Then, despite losing Hunter to a lacerated liver on a pretty dirty hit during their rivalry game versus Colorado State, the Buffaloes were able to erase an 11-point fourth-quarter deficit to win 43-35 in overtime to go to 3-0. Unfortunately, a lot of the good vibes came to a screeching halt in Eugene, Oregon, where they got shut out in the first half 35-0 on route to a 42-6 loss versus the top 10 Oregon Ducks. And they've got a challenging schedule coming up, starting with Heisman winner Caleb Williams and the USC Trojans. Still, considering where Colorado has been the last two decades, the early returns of Dion's arrival in Boulder are fantastic. But how does one man make so much of a difference so fast? Dion's early success at Colorado, and his rising star as a college football coach in general, make sense if you consider a few things. You don't really see too many Hall of Fame football players get into coaching, but Dion is all in. He's widely seen as one of the best cornerbacks to ever play in the NFL. And not only that, 
but his style has inspired a generation or two of defensive backs since his retirement to try to follow in his flashy footsteps. How often do you see a corner high step into the end zone as he's returning a pick six? Some of them might not even know it, but that all started with Dion. Couple that with the fact that he actually played Major League Baseball for multiple seasons while in the midst of his Hall of Fame NFL career, and you've got potentially the most impressive playing resume for a college football coach ever. That's an easy sell for a recruit looking for the best place to go to improve his chances at being an NFL player, or even an all-time great. Being a college football coach requires you to be part tactician, part salesman. But the most important element for a college football coach may be the leadership ability it takes to motivate 70, 18 to 22 year olds toward a common goal, fighting through selfishness, laziness, or whatever else normally befalls a young man. Deion Sanders appears to have that skill in spades. When you listen to him talk about his job, it seems like he views motivation and teaching life skills as his top priorities. He gets the most joy from helping mold young men and showing them how to be accountable, confident, and successful. If you just take a few minutes to watch some of the clips of the way he motivates and challenges his team, and then read the comments below those videos, you'll see that they're all celebrating how he isn't pulling any punches, and how he's forthright and honest with his players, but how he still treats them with respect. In that viral clip of him introducing himself to the Colorado team he was inheriting, he famously told the entire room to go to the transfer portal if they were scared. Some could take that as overly harsh, but he was simply trying to weed out the people who were not confident enough in themselves to take a challenge from him. And if you prove that you're up to the task of being challenged by Coach Prime, you'll earn his respect. And then, when you go out to play on Saturdays, he'll encourage you to be yourself and have fun. Dion is very old school in the way he challenges his players and doesn't put up with anything he doesn't like. In spring practice, he took everyone's number away and made them all earn the number they got to wear this season. Not everyone can get away with that style of leadership without being resented a little bit, but Dion can because of his impressive playing resume and the clear love he has for his players. And he'll be able to continue to do so as long as his coaching career goes the way it has so far. It's clear that Dion Sanders is an absolute magnetic force of a human being. He's had crazy star power since he reached Florida State in the mid 80s and took on the prime time persona that fueled his popularity and made him one of the most recognizable athletes of the 20th century. Not only was he a star on the field, but he's been a mainstay in American pop culture even after retirement, in commercials and otherwise. Dion's aura helps him in two ways. First, the confidence and presence that he walks around with naturally attracts people to him. In college football, where recruiting is the lifeblood of your program, that's huge. At this moment, it'd be difficult to find too many high school players that wouldn't want to suit up for Colorado and play for Coach Prime. His first recruiting class and transfer class were good, but there should be an expectation moving forward for high-profile recruits to commit to play for him at Colorado. Secondly, Dion's confident personality means he doesn't shy away from the spotlight. He embraces it, encourages his team to embrace it, and all the noise that may come with it, and motivates the team to provide that confidence they need to back up the talk. Now, that may come back to bite them at times, as it did in their loss at Oregon, but that's the way he goes about things. And players love to play with a guy like Coach Prime in their corner. He expects a ton out of them, but if they give their best effort, there's no one that will be more on their side than him. You can see that in how he encouraged and uplifted Jimmy Horn, one of his wide receivers who was having a terrible game against Colorado State. He gave him a positive thing to focus on, which was the fact that his dad was watching him and was proud of him, and then encouraged him to go out there and do what he knew he could do. And then he went out and scored the game tying touchdown with seconds to play. Dion's got a knack for showmanship too, which has helped bring more eyeballs to Colorado and transform the image of the program overnight. Just look at the TV ratings his team has brought in so far this year. 9.3 million people watched the Buffaloes knock off Colorado State, the fifth highest college football viewership in ESPN history, despite a 9 p.m. Eastern start time. Each of Colorado's first four games were in the top seven of viewership for the season, which is just insane for a team coming off a 1-11 season. On top of all of this, Coach Prime actually has the success to back up his bravado. At Jackson State, he immediately turned around a faltering program and led them to back-to-back -back conference title games and three total losses in his final two seasons at the helm. Before that, he was the offensive coordinator for his kids' high school team, and they won three straight state championships. And now he's become the first head coach ever to lead a team to a 3-0 start the year after losing 11 games. So you get the spectacle that he brings, which brings hype and more money into the program, but you also get high quality winning football. It's a perfect storm, really. The Buffaloes probably won't win the Pac-12 this year, and they may even fade badly down the stretch. 
Talent is very important in college football, and it's hard to assemble a top 10 team in one offseason. But as long as Coach Prime is around, Colorado is going to be impossible to ignore, both on and off the field. Why do you think Dion has been so successful so quickly at Colorado? Let us know in the comments, and we'll see you in the next one.